give you just two performance notes. Number one, own yourself. Okay. Right now what you're doing is, like in normal everyday speech, you're very ebullient, you're very happy, you're very up and bright and, and with it. When you go into performance mode, yeah. you get quiet. You, you take your words and you're very sensitive with them. You're very careful with them. <laughs> I want you to be careful with them when you need to be. But when you're doing exposition, you should have a neutral narrator voice that doesn't really change all that much when you're describing things because you're the disembodied narrator, right? So whether it's an entire annihilation of a universe or the drop of a pin or somebody is just basically breathing, they're driving and they're breathing, whatever that is, all of those narrator segments are exactly the same. When the characters speak or when you come to the climax of the book or the reveal, then there's a slight change. But for the most part, that's the bedrock. That's what you're relying right, on. Right, because if everything, everything is special, nothing is, right? So there's nothing to... Well, and you also don't want to telegraph what's going to happen. You want to create the space, but you want to let the reader find the conclusion, right? Yeah, that so, makes perfect sense. So just own it. And also, there was something else I wanted to tell you. Uh, oh, slow down. <laughs> slow the f down that's what everyone tells me well, about everything it's, it's well keep your speed when it comes to developing cool shit but uh when it comes to narrating an audiobook remember the the listeners have this fire hose fire hydrant level of information coming at them even if they've read the book before mm -hmm. they don't know it word for word you as the author may but you probably don't either but you have an advantage you have the script right in front of you yeah. And you also have this sort of urgency to get to the good stuff. So you're like, okay, let's, you know, I want to dispatch. Well, part of it's a relic, too, from the, from the time when I'm polishing to get it done. Mm -hmm. Right? And now it's different. Now it's a performance and it's not polishing. So exactly. I, have to, I have to train myself. Yeah, but when I you're can just sort of like reading it out loud to say, does that sound right to the ear as well as the eye? Eh, I don't know. Let me change that to presently yeah. or whatever. So, um, but when you're actually doing it, it will, first of all, be much easier on the listener because they'll actually be able to accept all that you're giving them and be able to... And care. They can't care if it's exactly. too fast. And, and what you don't want them to do is complain that they had to keep hitting the 30 seconds back button on right. Audible. I mean, Audible won't let you get that far. They'll say, hey, this, is, this performance is just too fast. It has to be a little bit slower. Um, so slow down, even to the point where it seems... This is too slow. It's just too, too slow. slow is better than too no, fast. I'm not saying say it word at a time, but just take your time with it. Let the words bloom. There was something that you had there crystallizes or there was, you know, illuminescent or something, and you rushed right through the word, and it's such a beautiful word, you know? Like, <laughs> take your time with this. This is like eating a really wonderful meal by wolfing down all the food and not tasting anything. Yeah, that's you a great really, analogy. And I love language. I'm a language guy, so, like, now, luxuriate. You have a, you have a very uh, blue-collar sound. You know, you have this very colloquial sound. Nobody's going to ever accuse you of having graduated from Oxford and, <laughs> and having this slow, plodding, exacting enunciation of everything. Number one, you probably grew up in a family where it was hard to get a word in edgewise. Yes. If you didn't, you didn't get any food. <laughs> so everybody has this sort of urgency of, i got to get this out now because if I don't get it out now, then nobody's going to pay any attention to me. And he's looking over his shoulder already at whoever the most interesting person is at the party, and he's going to excuse himself, and he's going to go talk to him if I don't get this whole thing out, right? <laughs> People suffer with that all the time. But if you actually use silence effectively, People will think you're you're hurt. There's something wrong with you. You're ill, and they'll lean in and go, "Are you okay?" <laughs> uh, but what they will do is they'll stop because silence sounds so much different from um or ah or like or you know or and uh, so yeah. So you know, like all these bridges that we use to grab people's attention to not let go of what, what verbal we're, we're crutches, doing, right? So yeah, they're actually called vocalization bridges, and you don't need to do that. Certainly not when you're doing an audiobook. What you need to do is let the words do the heavy lifting because they're built for it and take your time. Let the words bloom. Oh, I love that. Right? Yeah, I love that. I love what you do. Like, I love what you do. You have a. 
I mean all of it. I, I love what you do as a professional narrator. That's a cool. That's a cool gig. Great. But I also love that you teach it, and I yeah. I just I love it. And I and I all of it. I love that you're conversion based too. <laughs> you're. It's a it's a it's a serious business, and oh, you yeah. want people who get on your site to make the right decisions. And right, exactly. I just I love it. I, I love so, what you're doing. So awesome, so one awesome, more thing awesome. That I want you to do with the microphone, and that is yes. to get that sock and put it on it, and listen to one with it on and with it off, and you'll hear just a slight difference in the high end. It will cut down a little bit on the sibilance that you have, which is fine. You don't have an overly sibilant voice. You just have very pronounced s's, and that sock will help. And then from there, just be really rigid about how far away you are from the mic. And when you have to yell, remember, there's no limiter on the microphone. So if somebody's calling off to somebody, it's like, hey, John, make sure you move off mic. And okay. you tilt your head up and to the left or off to the right or whatever. Um, you know, if you, if you have characters that are raising their voices. And if you have characters that are whispering, then move in a little Lean bit closer in. and lower your volume level of your voice, but keep the intensity and the energy of what you're saying. And that should cover like 90% of what you have to do. Oh, that's so right. awesome. Well, there you go. I think that, that covers it for you. And, you know, once you get the sock on there, you'll be good to go. And hopefully that helps. And It totally does. And thank you so much. And I'm so excited oh, to actually one, start one recording. Thing, sorry, one last thing. Make sure that the volume in your headphones isn't so loud that you're talking softer. That may be contributing to the talking softer. So t you might want to turn your headphone volume down just a scooch. That's a good not, idea. Not the, yeah, the one that's the volume, the triangle, not the computer versus mic one. Just a little tiny bit. It may be fine. I don't know. If you no, I think to, you're right. If you're starting to like listen for yourself, like you can you can't hear yourself as well as you'd like, turn it up. But what happens when we have headphones on? Is you ever been at a party where somebody's got a headphone on and you go, "Oh, do you like the music you're listening to?" Yeah, I like it a lot. You know, you, because they're trying to hear themselves at yes. the same volume that they hear themselves when they don't have headphones on. So right. that same process of hearing yourself almost exclusively convectively through the air rather than through the bones in your throat conductively, because we hear both when mm -hmm. we're speaking out loud in normal language, that can uh, make you want to talk softer if it's too loud. If of it's course. not loud enough, you'll start talking louder so that you can hear yourself, <laughs> right? So if you want to do really intimate work, you might want to turn the headphone volume down a little bit and say, previously on LA Law, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. Thank you so, right. so much. See ya. Have a great day.